hello everybody welcome to the impressive channel beyonce dropped her new single break my soul and this single was highly anticipated a lot of people were waiting on new music from beyonce but break my soul is a lot different than what people were expecting i was aware that beyonce was going to experiment with club music but i didn't expect her to release a house song as her leading single but that's exactly what she did break my soul is a 90s inspired dance song and she actually sampled robin s's show me love so she was kind of paying homage to that era and i actually kind of like the song i do i like how positive the message is and i also like how she fused the bounce music with the house music and she had big frida on there so it was fun upbeat and lighthearted. if i had a critique i kind of wish the production had more elements to it because i felt like something was missing in the beat it did sound a bit generic if i'm gonna be honest but it's not a bad song i do like it and this is not the only song Beyonce is going to release. Her publicist did hint that she will be dropping more music soon. So I'm very interested to see how her sound is. I don't know if she's going to stay with the whole house music sound or if she's going to do something different. Who knows? But I'm not mad at her new single. It's unexpected, but it's going to appeal to a more universal audience. And the thing I find very interesting about this all is I'm noticing that dance music is having a resurgence. It never went out of style, but it seems like it's becoming trendy, especially since artists like Lizzo, Dua Lipa, The Weeknd, and Doja Cat had success with it. So I see that whole dance music explosion happening again, just like it happened 10 years ago when EDM and techno pop was really the wave. House music also had its wave as well, and it seems like it's the new wave now. And Beyonce's new song is reflective of that, and also Drake's new album is reflective of that. And I want to talk about Drake's album, honestly, never mind, because I do have a lot of thoughts about it. He dropped it out of the blue this past Friday, and he did this right after hearing that Beyonce was gearing up to release her album. I thought the timing of that was a little suspicious, but Drake did say something interesting. He said, it's all good if you don't get it yet. We'll wait for you to catch up. So apparently he knew that this was the sound that's being ushered into the industry right now. And he made sure to release his music before Beyonce did to kind of beat her to the punch. And I don't think that's a coincidence. Beyonce had been working on her album for two years and Drake just came out with this one. So I'm like, mm, maybe Drake got some inside information and he's like, let me be the one to lead the pack. But I will say this, I think it's cool that Drake is tapping into a different market. He's appealing to a different audience and he's experimenting with his sound. And while I think him making an album like this is a risky move, I do think marketing wise, it is kind of smart because Drake is trying to tap all corners of music. And this album will be received well internationally. However, when it came to the actual music, I will admit his execution fell flat to me. I just felt like his delivery was very monotone and unimaginative and very uninspired. But the production on the album was actually pretty good and I feel like a few songs on there had potential. I really like the production on Tie That Binds. Massive and Currents were actually cool. I think Sticky is a hit. Also, Jimmy Crooks featuring 21 Savage is good. And it's obviously the standout song because it's the song that resonates the most with Drake's core listeners. But everything else was kind of blah. I'm also disappointed that he fumbled Liability because Liability had potential. I do like the fact that he did the whole slowed and reverb sound on it but i wish he actually rapped on the song as well he could have added a few rap verses and kept the hook i would have loved if he kind of was singing in different pockets and different registers but i guess he really needs party next door to help him with that because his melodic songs do sound a little dry without party but in my final analysis i will give drake some credit for actually trying to do something different However, I couldn't overlook the fact that the album sounded uninspired and rushed. I get the feeling that he rushed to put this album out for two reasons. He heard that Beyonce was working on some dance music and he wanted to get it out before she did. So I think he was trying to one up her in a sense. Also, I think he rushed to put this project out because 
He's trying to fulfill his contract with Universal. If you don't know, Drake just signed a $400 million deal with Universal. So he's definitely going to be pumping out a lot of music to get through that contract quickly. But one thing I don't want is for his music to sound rushed. I want him to put out quality work. I don't mind him experimenting, but it has to be good. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if he does country, hip hop, rock, it doesn't matter. As long as it sounds good, I'll be here for it. Now let's talk about these sales. His album, Honestly Nevermind, is on the track to sell 210 to 230,000 units in the first week. A lot of people are saying that this is a flop for Drake. Now, selling 200,000 in the first week is not a flop for anybody, in my opinion. And the numbers aren't too bad considering that Drake dropped his album out of the blue with no promotion. But I understand the numbers are underwhelming for an artist like Drake because Drake is used to selling above 500K in the first week. So these numbers aren't great for him, but it's not a flop. And I wouldn't rule the album out completely because I could see a few of the songs becoming hits. Like I said before, Sticky is a hit. I also think Jimmy Crooks and Massive will be hits as well. So Drake is gonna pull numbers regardless because he is a hit maker. Now moving on from music, I wanna talk a little bit about Tamar Braxton. Now recently, Tamar sat down and did an interview on the State of Black Music podcast and she opened up about her current relationship with her former co-host from The Real. Now, just to give a backstory, Tamar was on the talk show The Real for a few years before she was abruptly fired in 2016. When she got cut from the show, there was a public fallout between her and her co-host, especially with her co-host Lonnie Love, because Tamar believed that Lonnie was secretly plotting behind the scenes to get her fired. Lonnie has denied this multiple times. However, Lonnie's former friend and collaborator, Cookie Hole, actually revealed that she indeed was trying to influence the producers to get rid of Tamar, but Lonnie didn't have the power to fire or hire anybody. So technically, she wasn't the reason why Tamar got fired, technically. Since Tamar left the reel, she has rekindled her friendship with Adrian Bailon and Tamara Mowry. She also talked about how Jeannie Mai was very vocal behind the scenes when she got fired. And I thought that was very interesting because it was always believed by the real fans that Tamar and Jeannie didn't really get along, but apparently they got along well enough for Jeannie to give her the heads up about a lot of things. This is what Tamar said about her co-host. Well, I've only connected with um, um, Adrian and Tamara, um, but I think Adrian is an amazing human being. Um, and I've learned a lot from her because, you know, with her relationships with females, she's taught me how to truly let things go and not have beef, but not have any affiliation. But she taught me that and that was big in my life. Tamara is a phenomenal human being. And she's one of the first people who reached out to me after Tracy passed. And um, Tamara gets sisterhood. And she gets when when you and your sisters don't always agree on things. And that's where we truly, really bonded. I mean, a lot of people think that Jeannie and I had beef. We didn't. Like, when everything happened, she was the most vocal out of everyone behind the scenes. And that's not something that people know. And I never said anything because I didn't know that that was something she was comfortable with. And I wasn't going to be like, oh, well, Jeannie told me, blah, 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 blah. but Jeannie did blah, 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 blah. <laughs> a lot. Um, and I appreciate her for that because she didn't have to. So Tamar basically implied that Jeannie was spilling tea to her behind the scenes and she was taken up for her when she got fired. And I respect Jeannie for that because she definitely didn't have to do that. She and Tamar weren't close friends. But one thing about Jeannie is I noticed that she will speak out if she feels like somebody has been done wrong. It's kind of similar to how she stood up for Amanda Seals when Amanda was left out of the Reels Farewell episode. Both she and Adrian got on Instagram Live to stand in support of her. First part of that is like, I thought about your feelings. I was like, oh man, like that doesn't feel good to be left out of anything. And, and number two, I wouldn't want you to think that this was something knowingly done 
on our behalf, you know? Right. So, so that's why calling you was so important. And it was important, not just to call Adrian. I was like a FaceTime. We are here <laughs> and we're like, are you okay? Now Tamar is still not cool with Lonnie because she really believes that Lonnie snaked her. However, she doesn't have any animosity towards Lonnie. She said that she forgave her for what she allegedly did. Lonnie, you and not you and Lonnie have I haven't seen Lonnie. It is it's it's But the truth is, Phil, I don't feel like that's a conversation that needs to be pushed. I feel like God hasn't allowed us to come face to face or come into that, you know, situation because it's not time. You know what I mean? Whether it's for me or for her. You know, I don't necessarily need to have a conversation with her to forgive her or because I already have. And I don't have to have a conversation, you know, for the public. Yes, I agree. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? That. And so I feel like everything is in God's divine timing and order. And when that comes time, you know, it will happen. And, and I welcome it. I thought that this was a very mature response from Tamar. I do hope in the future Tamar and Lonnie can have a sit down talk and set aside whatever differences they have. But if they don't have a conversation, that's fine as well. I think Tamar has moved on from that and she has healed from the betrayal and she seems like she is in a better place in her life. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.